fingers crossed guys yes <laughs> we're live again and it seems like this time it's going to work yes uh, we're actually doing um we're doing a gamble so everybody feel free to like put your money in how long will last on this one i'm thinking like we got like a good six minutes but <laughs> I give it less, probably in two minutes. Uh, the yeah. You know what? Maybe this is like an on purpose thing. It's like Twitter. We're just trying to do 140 characters at once. So <laughs> it's all good, guys. You're welcome. It, it's You're all welcome. good. It's all good. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, guys, for the technical difficulties. But let's pick up where we, where we left. Or let's actually give a really quick summary for the people that are just sure. joining. And for the people that are still on there to, to refresh them where we left. Okay, so first of all, for all of you souls who have clung on for these three parts, we salute you, you're a wonderful, beautiful person and you're going to succeed because you are very persistent, just like we are. Um, I'm Paloma of the Negotiation Project Facebook group. Um, I am a confident communication strategist, so I help you communicate with confidence so that you can negotiate, persuade and pitch your way to a hell yes um, and build yourself a life of freedom because at the end of the day that's what we're doing here money is amazing but we are really in this crazy entrepreneur game that we put in a ton of time and blood and sweat and tears because we care about freedom so what I do is I teach people a lot of very talented people are stuck or they feel stuck or they think they're stuck and part of it is that they're not yet saying yes to themselves um, and the first negotiation that happens is you with yourself. So I teach people how to communicate with confidence and how to attract opportunities and attract resources and collaborations and all those things that you want that can make your life um, really joyous and free so that you don't have to wake up at nine o'clock when somebody else tells you to wake up. So you can go on vacation when you want to go on vacation. So you can make friends that make your life amazing and meaningful. That's what I help people do. So I'm really excited that you're listening and absolutely feel free to ask any questions that you have about confident communication, negotiation and persuasion. And we will absolutely hit those in this call. Perfect. And now quickly a recap of the, um, what was the name again? The daily negotiation practice. Yes. Yes. The rules. Okay. Sure. So a lot of people are scared to ask. And in this, crazy entrepreneurial world, you eat what you kill, okay? So you have to get really, really, really good at asking for what you want, right? Nobody's gonna hand it to you. And so um, I've created this practice that helps clients and helps people in my group, and every once in a while we post a picture of it called DNP, Daily Negotiation Practice. The rules are very simple. You need to ask for something every day, okay? Maybe you ask for a freebie, Maybe you ask for a discount. Maybe you ask someone for a favor. Um, whatever it is, ask for something crazy. Go to a store and say, hey, can I work the cash for a minute, right? Like go to a Subway sandwich shop and say, can I make my own sandwich, right? Ask for something every day and you will be surprised at how many yeses you get, right? So we can definitely get into the technicalities of how to build a yes worthy pitch. But if you would simply ask, you are ahead of the game and you're doing more than 50% of the people are. And the reason that people are afraid to ask is because they are afraid of rejection. They're afraid of what a no means. But the truth is a no does not mean a lot. It gives you some valuable information. But it does not mean you're bad. It does not mean no forever. It does not mean you can never ask me again, right? A no is a very particular kind of no. It means no in the way that you asked, no right now, um, no but come back to me with a different offer pre-packaged in a different way, right? So the way the, the DNP works is like this. Every day you ask for something. If you, if you do not ask, you get no points. If you ask and you get a yes, you get one point. If you ask and you get a no, you get two points. And the reason is because you had more cojones that you asked for something bolder when you got a no, right? You took a risk. And the point of this game is to reward the process rather than the outcomes, okay? Listen, outcomes happen, right? If you show up every day, you're going to get more yes and you're going to perfect and you're going to iterate and you're going to fine tune the way that you ask. Um, but what happens is a lot of people don't even try. A lot of people don't 
They're like, I'm not going to go to the gym until I'm skinny or I'm not going to put any of my content out there until it's perfect. Well, guess what? You don't get to show up perfect. You have to improve in front of other people, just like all of us who are really working hard in this entrepreneurial space to make amazing change and to make possibility for our fellow millennial peers. Um, what we're doing every day is showing up. And as I always tell my clients, they will forgive you for improving. Oh, like Drake, right? He wasn't that great at the beginning, but, but he got great by showing up every day and actually doing it. So, um, and if you want to follow someone who did a similar project, a guy named Jia Jiang on YouTube has wonderful TED Talks about how he did 100 days of rejection, asked for crazy things for 100 days and got a lot more yes than he was expecting. Perfect. So first step, guys, you're going to do the daily negotiation practice. Ask for something crazy. Ask for something bigger and bolder every day. And post your picture. Post your picture. And whether it, if it was a no, amazing. That's a two-pointer. And if it was a yes, post a picture of that. Like one of my favorite ones in my group was, do you guys ever go for sushi? And they ask you at the end, like, what kind of ice cream you want? Red bean or mango or green tea? Well, I'm indecisive when it comes to that. So I say, like, you know what? I'd like a little bit of everything. And one of my DNP pictures is a scoop of each one, right? <laughs> so they make up for some fun picks. And I think one of, one of my favorite... I mean, the DNPs that are profitable are working with clients, right? Are pitching your stuff to clients. But a really fun one that I did um, was a roommate of mine really loves Oreos. And so I was in a grocery store and I convinced the manager to let me borrow a $200 case of all these different Oreos they wanted to put in his room and kind of freak him out. And, uh, and he said yes to me. So ask, ask. You'll, you'll surprise yourself. First step, guys, ask. All right. What are we on to for the next step? So if people start doing this DMP, if they're sure. becoming more comfortable with occasionally getting a no, preferably yeah. getting a yes, yeah. um, what is the next step? Good. So the next step would be um, learn how to package things, right? So I think that a lot of people don't feel particularly empowered to make their own deals in this life, right? So one pre-created deal, and this is not to knock it if you are an employee, that's perfectly fine, but that is a kind of deal that somebody else has packaged up for you, right? And the deal is you come in, you give us your time and your energy and your ideas, and we give you this set hourly rate, right? That's one kind of deal. Um, there are so many kinds of deals around us, right? You go to Starbucks and you don't think of it like it's a trade or a deal, but everything is a deal. Everything has been constructed for you. And side note, when you are playing in somebody else's system, you're a horse running on somebody else's racetrack, you will never, never get the same uh, quality of outcomes as if you were the owner of the racetrack, right? Um, so for something like Starbucks, you go in and let's say a latte is five bucks. That's a prearranged trade, right? They already said, you give us five bucks and we're going to give you this latte, right? Well, Starbucks didn't always exist, surprise. Um, Adam and Eve didn't have it, right? Like, uh, so all of the things that we enjoy and we take for granted, and you know, we have all these people, these gurus, these companies that we put on a pedestal, Facebook and Google, blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what? All these companies started um, with people and a little bit of audacity, right? If you take a company like Alibaba in um, China, the biggest e-commerce platform. I like this story because I started out as an ESL tutor teaching, teaching students English, right? Until I started teaching higher level skills like confidence, negotiation, persuasion, pitch, blah, blah, blah. But uh, the dude, Jack, was it Jack Ma, who began Alibaba? Um, there's a wonderful documentary and feel free to hit me up and I'll send you a link to it on YouTube. A wonderful documentary of Jack Ma standing in his living room. And by the way, he was, he was an English teacher. He didn't know much about tech or any of these platforms, right? Um, and by the way, like in China, um, he had to really um, negotiate with the government that was very resistant to what he was doing. And you see this powerful scene of him with a bunch of other English teachers in his living room. 
and he is such a persuasive speaker that you believe him. And, and, you know, when you, when you want to be convincing, you have to be convinced, which means that you have to convince yourself. Okay. So the first yes is you convincing yourself and then you can convince other people. Um, but yeah, you need to package, right? You need to, um, propose trades. So, um, my computer has been giving me a little bit of a headache. And so my, my roommate just next door is a computer dude. And I said, Hey Richard, will you, uh, will you work on my computer? And I made him dinner. Okay. So you can, you can make and package these trades in any way. Right. And this makes us feel super powerful because, you know, a lot of people say like, Oh, I didn't, I can't be an entrepreneur because I didn't start with, I don't have any money. I don't have any connections. I don't have any resources. Okay. Listen, the best entrepreneurs didn't have that. Right. Um, I didn't, I mean, listen, it was a wonderful advantage for you to grow up in Canada. It was a wonderful advantage that my mom was an entrepreneur, but by no means did I start out with, with money to fund my projects. Right. I had to be a resourceful hustler. Like we all had to, right. And I come from, uh, my grandmothers on both sides are from Romania and my dad's from Romania and they grew up poor and they were super resourceful because they had to be. And so I learned how you can make something from nothing. You have to learn how to ask, to get comfortable asking and to say yes to yourself first and to propose those trades. That that would be the next step. Cool. Um so moving on from there, so we, we're, we're becoming comfortable with ourselves first. We're becoming uh, used to packaging everything up, thinking in terms of trades, in terms of deals. Yeah. And what is the next step to it? So storytelling is everything. I got a master's in creative writing, okay? And it is amazing, amazing. And I, you know, I studied rhetoric. The, the art and craft of language, how we can persuade with language, right? Um, it is remarkable how you can move people with story, right? When somebody chooses you, when someone decides to buy your products or buy your services, they are not saying yes to those particular services. They're saying yes to you and all of the stories that you bring with you, right? So everything from um, your cool accent to um, the fact that let's say your that my mom was an entrepreneur. Be by the way, before we had our James Altucher's and our um, let's say Seth Godin's and our um, Tim Ferris's to look up to, right? Like she was really she was really making it on her own and and built this huge business library. So storytelling is crucial. Now, the natural next question is, and, and by the way, why is it that storytelling is so important? Because one, we want to enroll other people in our vision, right? We want other people to say hell yes to us. Because um, after we've said yes to ourselves, we want to, to, you know, close these deals and make these trades. And so if you want to be a very good storyteller, I'm going to just give you like, two or three really quick, easy things to keep in mind, okay? Good storytellers are contrast masters. And what I mean by contrast is the highest point of pain, um, and uh, sorry, the lowest point of pain and the highest point of pleasure in a story. That's what makes it satisfying, right? So if I tell you, um, uh, Mitchell, today I found a, uh, I don't know. I found a hundred dollar bill. That's not a, that's not a particularly compelling story. But if I tell you about how I grew up in extreme poverty and, and I worked my ass off to get this opportunity and I turned this opportunity into, um, into this business venture of my own. And when I made my first hundred dollars, I wept and it wasn't about the money. It was about something bigger. It was about, so, so you want to introduce meaning, right? Humans care about meaning. We are meaning seeking creatures, right? And so you have to understand what do humans value, right? 
humans value freedom and they value love and they value connection and they value belonging and they value status and they, um, they value symbols of their identity, right? So you have to incorporate human val deeper human values. What is it really about, right? So I was a teaching assistant in the area of English. And one thing that we would always say when people wrote their, Mitchell, did you like writing essays in school? Or it's okay if you hated it? Uh, not per se my favorite, but right now, okay. right now I, I developed a more love for it. <laughs> okay. Hey, it's totally okay if you don't, if you don't, because it, um, maybe we didn't always find it like super useful, but the cool thing is copywriting for yourself as an entrepreneur can be crazy profitable, right? Yep. Anyways, in the conclusion of your essay of the teaching assistants, we would all often write, so what? which means who gives a crap, right? Like, good job you proved that, I don't know, Canada and the USA are wonderful trading partners, but who cares? Why does this matter, right? And when we are storytelling, we always have to connect to who cares and why does this matter, right? So um, one of my lovely roommates right now here in New York, she does hand lettering, right? Which is really beautiful. But the next level up in selling what she does is attaching story to it and, and making us care, right? Um, so high levels of contrast between the highest point of pain and pleasure in the story, tension, right? A, a, an, easy, um, an easy thing to remember is tension equals attention. So um, at work, we're paid in dollars. Uh, at school, we're paid in grades. When we are communicating, we are paid in attention. So, and attention is the most scarce resource these days when um, content is highly abundant. You know, it used to be that you could sell information and we will still absolutely sell information, but the value of information has gone down and the value of actual implementation has gone up, right? As, who is it who says it? That um, it's not about information, it's about transformation. So, Getting to become a really good storyteller is crucial because you have to earn attention. You are not entitled to attention. It's something that you earn. Um, I'm writing this like secret little side project. I've been, uh, one of my projects over the last crazy 11 months has been to write a series of 15 or so eBooks to go from everything that I know when I teach my clients and, and really like putting it out there. Um, and so one of those is called the anatomy of interesting to why we find certain things interesting and attention worthy and yes worthy um so that's a little thing to look out for awesome so a little bit of a recap of what you just said um storytelling is everything yeah um you can you can really convince people by telling your story and when you're telling your story create a really big contrast between the lowest point of pain and the highest point of pleasure. Exactly. Add meaning to it. Uh, what is it that people tell you and really emphasize this? Is it love? Is it status? And why should people care about it? Why does it matter? And think about it when you're trying to communicate is actually you're trying to get people's attention. And with this abundance of information that's out there right now, okay. you really need to think about how you are trying to grab people's attention. Yes. And then, and then story connects to pitch, right? So um, if I had to give you, so it's funny, I always get asked this question, right? Um, I was just, the other day I was in an Uber with a friend. And whenever I tell people that I, I teach people about confident communication, more particularly negotiation, this dude who, let's say he's like some banker dude, they always ask me, give me like the one thing, like what's your top tip? For negotiation and I wanted to share that with you guys today so um, we've moved from storytelling to uh, pitch which and storytelling and pitch are sisters right you need both uh, the story is crucial it's the backbone of all good communication so what I tell people if you if you happen to pop into an uber and I'm there and you ask me Paloma uh, what's your number one negotiation tip it would be this another acronym okay D, B, D, don't be desperate. Got that? D, B, D, don't be desperate. So um, an awesome resource. I can actually, you know, I'll give you a couple resources. One, absolutely read Oren Claff's Pitch Anything. 
uh, read Dan Priestley's Oversubscribed. Um, and most recently I read Jim Camp's Start With No. And I had always shown clients how to not be desperate in terms of their mentality and, and making options for themselves. Um, and he has a whole chapter on how to not be needy, right? And so it, it was, you know, it's kind of funny that this is something that I've been teaching for a while. And I look in this um, negotiator dude's book and he's, he has a whole chapter on neediness as well, right? And what neediness is, is wanting something too badly. Because um, Mitchell, if you are selling something, and I say to you, I will do anything for it. Like, I really want this. I'm so interested, right? And I'm leaning on so much. Then what do you think as my adversary in the negotiation? Like, what is, as a strategic person, I'm like, I really want it, whatever. And then we're talking price. That I can sell you anything. You'll be able oh, to yeah. be willing to pay like there's, Yeah, there's, like, you can ask for anything because I really, really want it. Now, what happens if I say to you, Mitchell, I like, I think your course seems awesome. The truth is I've been examining a few different courses and I have some great options. Um, tell me a little bit more about it, right? So if I say that to you, how does that change the way that you feel about your ask or um, how far you can push me? If I say to you, hey, you know, I've been exploring, have some other job offers on the table. Honestly, I have some other houses that I'm looking at right now. I have some other people who are interested in me right now, right? Like yep. all of this, everything, by the way, that you learn in business goes for dating and relationships too. Like everybody's so um, fascinated by the way that it translates, but it's not so surprising when you realize that it's the art of attraction and it's absolutely about negotiation. That's why a book, and this is an unlikely recommendation, but the book, The Game by Neil Strauss. Now I will absolutely preface this by saying that it is totally misogynist in parts but it's a book for people who want to learn the art of pickup, picking up women. Um, and I read it because it's a wonderful study in psychology, right? It's a wonderful study in um, how much to lean in. How And, and so then the, the next logical question is, well, then how, what if you are desperate? Or like, what if you do really need it? What if you really need this client, right? It's your responsibility. In this day and age, I mean, if, if you have the basics, if you have food, shelter, water, you, you aren't desperate, right? People say, I need all the time. You don't really need, you want, right? And so cultivate this attitude of, I want blank, but I don't need it, right? I Maybe I want this partner, but I don't need him. Maybe I, I would love this house, but I don't need it. I would love to close this client, but I don't need it. There are there are more houses than you can buy. There are more boyfriends or girlfriends than you can have in a life. There are more jobs than you can do. There's more money than you can spend, right? And tapping into this abundance of real abundance. And I mean, people say this word abundance all the time, but the truth is if you are resourceful, there are a thousand hows for anything, a thousand ways to get the exact same thing. Um, so you need to manage your own neediness because neediness is not sexy and it makes people say, oh, they want it really badly. I can ask for more. I can push them harder. I can get them to lower their standards, right? Now, I know what you're wondering, Mitchell. You are wondering, so is there some kind of technique that I can use to, um, to minimize this, this feeling of desperation? And I'm going to say, what an amazing question. I'm so glad you asked. You, you read my mind. It's amazing. <laughs> I got it. So um, there is a technique. And guys, I'm just giving everything. So you can see, like, I show up and I over deliver just like Mitchell does, just like all of the wonderful people in our community do. If you like this, please feel free to jump into the negotiation project group where we share more juicy negotiation and sell yourself secrets. Um, this is one of my favorites. Okay. This is one of my favorites. So um, I hope you're listening. This is called what I call the maybe no. And this is the suggestion that, you know, let's say I, Mitchell has a job and I want this job from him. Okay. The suggestion that I may say no to him. Right. Because when you're working so hard, like you really want this client, then there's a certain power dynamic, right? The one who wants something more 
is less powerful. The one who has more options is more powerful, right? I'll just say that again. The one who wants something more, more badly, they have less power. The one who needs it more has less power. The one who does not need it, the one who has options, has more power. And, um, and people often ask me, like, what is confidence? I say confidence smells like options. That's what it is. Confidence is options, right? So it's like, I would love, everybody's listening, I would love for you to like me. And I am so fucking okay if you don't, right? The confidence of knowing, like, I want you, but I don't need you. And so the maybe no is, um, you suggest that, like, you might not take them on. And this is true for me, right? So, like, let's say somebody wants me to um, coach them or consult with them, right? Early on in my entrepreneuring career, right? I started this when I was 19 or 20 or so, right? I, I, and you tell me if you, if you had this experience, Mitchell, or it's like, I'll take anyone at the beginning. You're like, oh, somebody wants to work with me. Okay, done. Oh, they want to negotiate. They want, they want to pay me less. Okay, well, I should be just, I should just be grateful that they want me, right? Like, um, we get into this thing that I call at least thing. Like, at least it's something, or at least it's secure, right? Okay, th that means you're negotiating against yourself. You're negotiating yourself down. Um, so, so if in a call, let's say I'm on a discovery call with you and I say to you, and this is the truth, I've gone to the place in my career where I can be selective about who I work with. And so if I don't like you, listen, the truth is, you know, what, what my service is, is all of the wisdom that I have put in years and tears to learn. Like I've suffered to learn this stuff. Right. And so if I don't like you and want to work with you I have the the possibility that I can say no to you right and so when you realize nobody is above or below you nobody I don't care if like Mark Zuckerberg is sitting in the room with like Elon Musk and like the Pope I don't care because nobody is above you or below you and once you you suggest I may say no to you right like so I say to you it would be great if if we could find a way to work together um, but if we're not the right fit, then we may have, we may have to walk away from each other. Right. Um, that shows you that I'm not desperate, that I have options. Right. And that changes the game. That changes the power dynamic. Um, I'll leave a little cliffhanger, but if you join us in the negotiation project group and you ask me to tell you the Apple story, the Oren Klaff Apple story, it's one of the. It, it was such a bold move that this guy made that I tell this story to all my clients. So if you jump into the negotiation project group and you post, ask me, tell me the Apple story. I'll tell you this. Um, this guy, Oren Klopp is nuts in the most beautiful way. Alrighty. Nice cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'd love to, can I ask you a question, Mitchell? Always. So um, ha, were you, always a confident person because to be an entrepreneur i mean it's really important that you're confident because you're always selling yourself right where did you find yourself to always be a confident person or that's something that you learned like a skill uh it came over time i mean the more and yeah. more I, I went out there spoke to people presented the more yeah. natural it came but no at first it, it was a barrier yeah what felt scary early on um, the fact that people might be judging, um, yeah. yeah, basically what other people will think of you. That was, that was my main reason or yeah. my main hurdle back in the days. Yeah. Did you know other entrepreneurs when you started or like, how did you get into this? Cause if my mom weren't an entrepreneur, I mean, I'm an entrepreneurial kind of person, but I'm curious, like if I would have got into it, if I hadn't seen it play out, did you have entrepreneurs around you or how did you, how did you come to it? Yeah, um, I come from a, my, the majority of my family is entrepreneur. Um, plus, yeah, I always had examples in life that were very entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. So they inspired me to pursue this path as well. That's um, amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And you know what? I guess I wanted to, to offer one other thing that I think can be, no, I know can be useful to everybody listening. So it is so important that you surround yourself with the people that you want to be like. 
I created something called Paloma's People Audit because I had a lot of my clients saying to me, oh, I'm really interested in entrepreneurship, but uh, the people around me think that it, I'm like crazy or they don't understand me. I've had entrepreneurs who are like successful in the entrepreneur game who still say I feel misunderstood or like I don't have my people around me. Um, so I did a project when I was 24 to because my mom was the only entrepreneur I knew. And so my goal was I wanted to interview 100 entrepreneurs before I turned 25. That was my goal. Interview them, blog about them, um, befriend them, whatever. And uh, and so I, I charted out onto this adventure to meet 100 entrepreneurs. And I got to about 51 or so. Um, and they became like friends and mentors. So I would say to any people who are new in the entrepreneurial space, make sure that you surround yourself and you saturate yourself in um, people who are playing the entrepreneurial game and they'll bring you up. Did we cut out? Nope. Hey, I hey, can hey. hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. You can okay, hear me. Great. It just, your face froze for a sec, but I'm like, he's still good. He's still alive. <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah, so find your people. And there is no excuse today for feeling um, for feeling isolated in this entrepreneur game. Like it is a super tough and I, and I say game because it really is a game. Like we're trying to, it's, it's like, we're not just trying to make money, but we're trying to make freedom for ourselves. And we're playing within these uh, particular rules and we're making the rules at the same time as we're playing within them. Um, but find your people. And there's no excuse these days because, in these amazing online communities, there are people who want to know you as much as you want to know them. And there are people who really want to support you. Um, there are hundreds of uh, amazing people in my group who really want to support you. Hundreds of amazing people in Mitchell's group. Hundreds in our, our – we have mutual friends who are running these awesome Facebook groups. And they're just giving beautiful, um, important strategy, wisdom out for free because we want to bring people up, right? Like they say – the rising tide lifts all boats. It lifts us all up when we're when we're helping each other, and, and you know, one plus one can equal three. So, um, so find your people and reach out. And if you want to learn about rapport building, which is an important part of finding your people, um, ask me that. Come jump in my group and, and ask me because I've got a ton of awesome resources for you on how to um, how to how to break that ice and how to cultivate that relationship, how to take it from cold to captivated to friend, collaborator, client. Um, and unless there was anything else that you wanted to say, Mitchell, I would love to um, maybe end on a question yep. for people to sure. think about. Well, yeah, guys, if you, if you enjoyed what, uh, what we discussed today, be sure to, to follow Paloma and to check out her group um, because you did drop a lot of really great knowledge here today. Uh, a lot of credits to you, Paloma. It was really, Thank really so good much. stuff. Thank uh, you so much. What kind of question do you want to end with? Be my so, guest. So this is my question to you, okay? I ask this to anybody who, who is, enters my, my world and there's a potential that I might be able to help them, okay? If the right people with the right resources were sitting right in front of you, ready to say yes to you, would you know what to say to get them to take a chance on you? And if it's anything other than hell yes, I know exactly what to say and how to feel and how to be so that I get that hell yes, um, then with so much love, and if it's with me or if it's with somebody else, I don't care who, but make it a priority on your agenda to learn the art of persuasion because it opens doors for you, right? You don't have to be rich. You don't have to be the smartest person in the world. You don't have to be the most connected person in the world, but if you can persuade, you can have and do anything. And that, my friends, is freedom, and that's what we're in the game for. So just wanted to send you all some love and, and let you know that persuasion can open any door. Awesome. You definitely send some love. And I agree. Persuasion is one of the, the most important thing, guys, because we all live in a world that consists out of you know, human beings or a society that consists out of human beings. And when dealing with people, you continuously need to influence them if you want to achieve the things that you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, so super important and those things that you shared today will definitely help people to take the first steps to become 
more confident in uh, pitching, negotiating, and communicating in general. And yeah, I want to thank you again for, for oh, being here pleasure. with us today. My sharing pleasure. all of this information. Um, and it, you know what? Um, even though Zoom cut out like 94 times, guys, <laughs> it just shows that we really do like love you and want to share the good because like we show up um, and we're we're doing the hard the things that are hard for us, right? So like, don't do do what we do, right? Like it, we can preach all day, but you see us, you see us showing up and doing the hard work and the sometimes embarrassing work of like our stuff, our, our technology fails or whatever. Um, but but we're here and we're doing it. So much love, Mitchell. It was such a pleasure. This is our first time meeting. It was so nice meeting you. I agree. It was it was a pleasure. Um, and we should stay in touch for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, good. And guys, I want to encourage you, if you've got any questions or comments, please put them below this video and tag, I, Aloma, tag me into it. And we will get back to, to your question and make sure uh, that we'll answer it. Perfect. So cool. That being thank said, you so much, you thank have a you, good Paloma. Bye, Everyone guys. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs> Bye.